startups are the lifeblood of the medical device industry. The big companies depend on startups to get the risk out of the world. If you're a big corporation, it's not good if you put a whole lot of time and effort into a new technology and then it doesn't come to market. So startups fill that, that part of the world. But there's a wide, long road, and it's an expensive road. They only want to travel that once, forever. So they want the product that comes out at the end to be perfect in every way, have every feature that any person could ever want, and that causes them a lot of problems. Trying to cram too much in to that first device. When you start adding bells and whistles, that increases your timeline, it increases your budget, and it opens you up to more scrutiny by the FDA. And we advise them, take a little time and think about the absolute five core things you've got to do that's really gonna drive your product. Get those done, get those right, and then start doing the features that aren't quite as important. It's important to keep that feature list limited, to keep your budget needs limited. Requirement creep will be the death of your product. Another big problem startups run into is if you're bringing to market something that's never been done before, odds are you're gonna run into a lot of problems that you didn't anticipate. So the more unprecedented what you're doing is, the longer it's gonna take and the more it's gonna cost. As Murphy Law says, if it can go wrong, it will. So you've got to plan for that and you've got to pay him his due. Because the FDA is focused and driven to make sure that the product is safe and effective, they require a lot of documentation to prove it to them. The FDA cares that the device is safe. You're not building a commercial device that it can be just good enough. It has to be safe and effective and that usually requires time and dollars to get that done. It's, it's not just for regulation purposes that you have to do all this stuff. You know, you're really affecting lives and ultimately you're gonna have a reputation, especially when you're dealing with a medical device. Every day there are stories in the, in the news about device companies that, you know, killed somebody or hurt somebody and the reputations don't come back. If we weren't doing this for medical, it would go here. Listen to us, it's gonna take this. <laughs> it's gonna take this amount of work. Startups, quite often, the people that bring to it know the particular problem. They know cardiovascular. They're the world's best cardiovascular person ever. So because they know that the core of their domain very well, they tend not to listen to the people on the sidelines that are saying, hey, you need to think about this, this, and this. They only want to listen to the people that are telling them what they want to hear. Get the right expertise. There are people out there like us who know how to build the kind of device you want to build. People who can help you not only develop the product, but get it to the FDA, get it through FDA, and then uh, get it to the market. When we're working with startups, it's very important for the process to work well. It's for it to be a partnership. It is not a process of, well, here's my idea, go design it and I'll come back in six months and I'll be happy with it and we'll be done and I can submit it to the FDA and start generating revenue. It's better for the startup company to be part of our process, to be there when we're developing certain things and we're thinking, oh, this looks good. Well, they see it and their brain had a different thought process on what that would be. They're right there and we can make that incremental change right then and it builds a better product. No upfront going into this. If this is really important to you, you gotta trust the process, you gotta follow the steps. The fact that we've been down this road so many times means we're gonna get you down the road also.